اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم اللہم صلی علی محمد و علی آلہ و اصحابہ اجمعین والذین تباؤہم بی احسان الی یوم الدین والحمدللہ رب العالمین اللہ سبحانہ وتعالی has said in the Quran stand with truth and justice even if it goes against yourself and your families and your loved ones. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also has said in a hadith Qudsi that he has made oppression haram on himself and he has forbidden us to oppress each other. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, has said in the hadith that you should treat people the way you would like to be treated yourself and that if you judge you should listen to both sides before you judge before you make a give a verdict and he has said that if people who are evil want to make a change and to become good people who have spent their life doing wrong want to make a change then the first thing they should change is that they should stop lying. And the golden rule accepted by all religions and all cultures from the sons of Adam all around the world is to, do, to behave with others the way you would like them to behave with you. And we have been taught these things as young children in the primary schools in Bangladesh in the UK in fact all over the all over the world parents and teachers teach children these simple things and this is a surprise then how when we grow up and we become mature and people are promoted to become members of parliament ministers police, constables and inspectors that they forget these simple teachings. What we have been witnessing in the last 40 years in Bangladesh and what we have been seeing on our TV screens and hearing from our relatives on the ground in Bangladesh in the last year is atrocious. The police have been killing citizens indiscriminately without to identify who they are with live bullets aimed at the head and the chest according to Human Rights Watch. We have seen people battered and shot and their clothes ripped off and seeing people humiliated by police and government party activists and we are appalled we are appalled with the brutality of the Bangladeshi police and we are appalled at the lies of the government media and the government party controlled media and we are appalled at the atrocious lies of the government party officials, leaders and activists. It's very difficult to swallow the incredible words that you speak when we see on our TV screens, on our internet and we hear the witnesses from our relatives and friends what they say and what we see happening. It's surprising that you have the goal and the indecency to utter such lies. Now the government of Bangladesh and the opposition parties of, of Bangladesh, they all talk about democracy. They all claim that Bangladesh is a democratic country, that the government is a democratic, democratic government. 
And yet what we see happening in Bangladesh, the suppression of the media, the partisanship of the trials, the brutality of the police, is nothing like what we have studied democracy to be. If democracy is like this, then I ask you, why would you choose to have a democratic government? People have said that the two years of the military-backed caretaker government under Fakhruddin Ahmad, that the ordinary people were safer, had more food in their bellies, and had a more peaceful living than these times that we are living through now under the Awami League Democratic Government. Now, the big problem for the ordinary Bengali person who does not belong to any group and who does not support any of the groups but just wants to be a citizen, who wants to get on with their life, work hard for their family, worship Allah and participate and contribute to the globally linked world that we live in now. The problem with them is that they find it difficult to trust any of the parties, whether it is Awami League, BMP or Jamati Islami. Why? Because all of these parties have demonstrated by their words and their actions that they, they are, cannot be trusted, that it's incredible to believe what they say. Because they have claimed and made promises in the past and they have broken them. If I could just remind you of the hadith of Muhammad, peace be upon him, about the hypocrites, the munafikin, who will be in the bottom of the hellfire. They will be the fuel that will feed the fire of hell that will be used to burn the fasikun and the kafirun, the disbelievers and the criminals. The qualities of the hypocrites are that when they speak, they lie. When they make a promise, they break it. When you give them something in trust, they betray your trust. And when they get angry, they swear. Any one of us can apply these rules. The one who displays all four qualities is a true hypocrite. And the one who has three, two or one of these four is not a hypocrite, not a munafikin, but he is going down that road and he needs to be careful and he needs to turn around and amend his actions so you can use this to judge unfortunately this is what we have are seeing in the politicians when they speak they lie when they promise they break their promises and apart from the top leaders a lot of these party activists when they get angry they swear and when you trust them, in fact, we have trusted them with the public goods. We have trusted them with our waters and the fish in it. We have trusted them with our woods, the publicly, uh, the publicly owned trees, the forests, the roads and the, uh, the trees on the side of the roads and the fruit that grows on it. And we have trusted them with our underground resources, the coal, the oil, the gas, the, the metal ores and the minerals that are under the ground that belong to all of the people that live on that land. Because Muhammad, peace be upon him, has said in the hadith of Tirmizi, reported by Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, Al-Nasu shurakatu min salath, al-ma wal-kala wal nar all people are partners in three, water and woods and in energy, in the natural resources that are used to make fire or energy. And we have trusted our governments with these and we have found that from time and time again, they have betrayed us. This is why the people have a problem in trusting any of the parties. 
And the worst thing is that the job of any government is to look after the safety of the people, to give them security from fear and to give them food so that they are not hungry. The basic function of the government, amongst other things, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Quraysh. Now, look at the situation of the Muslims in Bangladesh. They deserve better than this. And they have a responsibility. I and you, all of us, we have responsibilities and we have rights. For the last 40 years, the people of Bangladesh have been abused by their own government who are ethnically Bengali, who speak Bengali, and yet they are abusing their citizens. They got independence in the hope that after being abused by the British during the British Empire and abused by the West Pakistanis during the days that Bangladesh was known as East Pakistan, that after the independence that they will have a government that loves them and that they would love their government. Instead, what we have seen in the last 40 years is a government that hates them and, and uh, they hate the government, a government that curses them and they curse the government. Like the hadith of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who said that the best government is the one who loves you and you love them and they pray for you and, they, and you pray for them. And the worst government is the one that hates you and you hate them and the one that curses you and you curse them. And the proof of this is that Bangladesh has won the award from the United Nations for being the most corrupt government in the world more than once. So what do we do, oh brothers and sisters, in this situation? How do we make a change? In what looks like a situation worse than death? We can start with the golden rule. We can start with ourselves. We can start with speaking to our own self. Make a decision that we will no longer treat others in a way that we, not, we do not like to be treated ourselves. We can make a decision that we will no longer lie. And we can make a decision that we will no longer remain silent when we see the oppression of our brothers and sisters at the hands of the oppressors, whether they are police or RAB or BGB or Jubo League or Satra League or, any, or anybody, even if they are Jamat Shibir or anybody, we will not remain silent because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that the one who is silent, as-sakitu ala zulum huwa zalim. That the one who is silent when he sees oppression in front of him or he hears about oppression, he will he is, a, is an oppressor and he will be with the oppressor on the day of, ju of judgment. So you can make that decision that you yourself Start with self-talk in your head, in your hearts. Say to yourself that the police have no right to hit or shoot or hurt or draw blood or break bones or bruise any single citizen unless ordered to by a judge after conviction in a fair trial. That means when you arrest somebody, if he is being violent to you, the police have a right to defend themselves. And in defending themselves, if they accidentally hurt somebody, well, we can swallow that. But then if they're running away, as we have seen in the images on the TV, if a person is running away from you to chase him and to hit him with a rock, to shoot him at point blank, that is wrong. Begin by saying that to yourself. 
<coughs> then say it to your brother, your sister, your father, your mother. Speak in each house, every single Bengali house, whether they be in Bangladesh or abroad. Let them say that it's wrong for the police to treat citizens or guests, people who are in Bangladesh as guests, non-citizens, like Maulana Nuri Alam Hamidi, who was mistreated and tortured by the Bangladeshi government recently. And he was innocent. He did not deserve any of that. That is wrong. Say it to your neighbours. I'm not asking any of you to put yourself at risk and go to Motijil and make, put yourself at risk of being, being shot and beaten by the police by saying it publicly. That is heroism. I'm saying, say it in your head. Say it in your heart. Say it in your homes. Say it in your back, backyard. Say it in your front yard. Say it in the shops. Say it in the mosques. Say it in the madrasas. Say it by the river banks. Say it in the rice fields. Say it in the markets. Say it in the schools. Say it in the offices. Say it in your father's house. Say it in your grandfather's house. Say it in your mamar body. Say it in your talur body. Let there be a wave of speech that says it's wrong for the police to beat and shoot and kill and it's wrong for government activists and officials to shoot and kill and beat an innocent person who hasn't been convicted in a fair trial. Say it wrong. We have seen, the world had seen this kind of oppression, this kind of uh, brutality before, in the Dark Ages, in England under the rule of King John, where it was required for Robin Hood to do what he did and for the barons to eventually confront King John and make him sign the Magna Carta. That was over 800 years ago, my dear Muslim brothers and sisters. In the West, they have sorted this problem 800 years ago. Why is it that in a country where 90% of people are Muslim, we still have not solved this problem? It is late. We are very, very late, my dear brothers and sisters. It is time that we sort this out. Begin with yourself. Begin by, by telling yourself. And then when you have the courage, tell your families. And when you have more courage and some of your family are supporting you, tell your village and go from there until every single Bengali has agreed and has said out loud that it is wrong for a person to be shot without trial. It is wrong for a person, for a policeman when arresting somebody to beat him in the way we have seen on the TVs. And it is wrong for people to be taken in the name of remand to be tortured before they have been convicted and sentenced for anything. In fact, Islam forbids torture completely. Once you have captured the enemy, even if he is fighting you in jihad, once you have tied him up, it's not allowed to hurt him, to damage him. You can check this in the Quran and the Hadith and you'll find this so. And the world has agreed publicly to say that torture is wrong, even though many governments, they break their their promise not to torture. And we have seen uh, Muslims being tortured around the world. However, it's time to stop. It's time for, for Bengalis to stand up for their rights. It's time for the people of Bangladesh to have a citizen's charter, a bill of rights, a written code of rights that will not be violated by their government. The British had Magna Carta in the 1200s. In the 2000s, it's time for the Bengalis to have their own version of the Magna Carta. In 1948, 
a universal declaration of human rights was agreed upon. And yet, to this day, there are so many governments violating human rights. And it's hypocritical that we see a government in Bangladesh that is trying to hang people because they have violated human rights. And yet, they are committing the same kind of crimes themselves today. أقول لكم لهذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم وآخر دوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين